Hey everybody and welcome to this video on how to revise for the Literature Unit 1 GCSE exam which takes place on the 23rd of May if you're on the AQA exam board that's just 54 days away. Now a lot of the time people send me messages before Easter and they say you know should I start revising and how should I revise but I really think that at this point at this time now we're in the Easter holidays you need to start revising for your GCSEs and GCSEs in some ways are really good because the amount of effort you put in will be reflected in the grades you get at the end so I'm not going to tell you how many hours you should revise or whatever but what I am going to tell you is that you should start revising now and I'm going to give you some tips for revising for the literature unit one exam because that's the first one in terms of the English exams um, and if you find this useful give the video a thumbs up and I'll do uh, a similar video for unit two and the English language exam as well and perhaps some general sort of um, tips so what do you need to do for the literature unit one exam and in some ways that's the easiest of the literature exams uh, certainly the least complex it's the exam that's an hour and a half long and you spend 45 minutes on one question and 45 minutes on the other question and depending on the text you're doing it's probably the short stories or an inspector calls in section A and probably of mice and men in section B so the first thing you need to do to prepare for that exam is to reread the texts now you might think what but it really is going to help you to know these texts inside out and the good side of this is that they're relatively short and easy to read so of mice and men is probably only going to take you about three hours to read and an inspector calls maybe two hours but you should reread the texts just to get them fresh in your mind if you're honest for a lot of you you won't have read them anyway you would have studied them in class you would have listened to your teacher you would have switched off here switched off there I can tell you even with a text as simple as of mice and men I've taught that now for 10 years in a row and I'm still teaching it now um, to uh, some private tuition students and still I find things I think oh I didn't realize that was in there and maybe once I did but you forget and all the rest of it so reread the texts if you start doing that now it's not a big deal it's not something that's going to take you ages you probably can read for 15 minutes a day if you don't have a copy of the books you can find them online just google them people have uploaded them onto websites and you can read there so that's the first thing, reread the text. Now, of course, it's an open book exam, so you do get a copy of the, the texts with you in the exam. So you might think, well, I can just look through the book and find the quotes and the sections I need. That is true, but that's all taking valuable time. It's much better if you've got the text fresh in your mind, you know where things happen, and um, you even memorize a couple of quotations. But that's not essential, of course. The second thing is to know the assessment objectives. So AO 1, 2, 3 and 4, as we know the assessment objectives, you need to know which are assessed and where. So for AQA, for example, um, the section A, which is an inspector calls or, you know, Lord of the Flies, short stories, woman in black, um, they... Uh, that section does not assess context, AO4. So there are no marks for writing about what was going on at the time the text was written. Now the really strange thing is that, of course, you do get marks for writing about the writer's ideas and themes. And in reality, the writer's ideas and themes are linked to the context in which they were writing. But you just need to write about the ideas and themes and not the context in section A. In section B, where most of you will be studying of mice and men, you are assessed on AO4, the context. So you need to make sure you're familiar and remind yourself with the information on 1930s USA, the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, that kind of thing. Um, so you need to know those assessment objectives or, or you at least need to know that context is not important in section A, context is important in section B. Okay. Similarly though, you are going to need to write something about language structure and form for all, uh, for both sections of the exam. And it's worth 
being prepared with ideas on language structure and form before you go in. Now what I've written here is aka watch the videos and buy the ebooks because obviously this is just an overview of what you need to do to revise but with 54 days until the exam well that's perfect for you to be watching one of my videos on uh, literature unit one each day okay so if you're doing the sunlight on the grass short stories I have a 28 video playlist Lord of the Flies 12 videos, Woman in Black 12 videos, and Inspector Calls 9 videos, and an ebook study guide at mrbruff.com, and of Mice and Men 27 videos. Now, the day before the exam, I get something like 400,000 views. But what I would suggest to you is that you do not cram before the exam, but you just watch one a day. Okay, so one video per day, watching the video, taking notes is going to massively help you. In those videos and in the ebook for an inspector calls, I explain analysis of language, structure, and form. I have um, details on the context of, of my cement. Everything you could pretty much need to know on these texts is in the videos. And rather than be overwhelmed before the exam and cram all of the videos, why not just watch one a day from today? And that's just for Literature Unit 1. And of course, for the other exams, you'll need to do the same. But one a day, which is going to take the probably range from five minutes to maybe an hour. So you can look through the videos and you can think, OK, that's a long one. I'll do that one on Sunday when my nan's over, whatever it is. Um, but watch one video per day and you're going to I absolutely guarantee you'll be better prepared for the exam if you watch one video per day. Now, practice papers. The exam boards, you can just Google their websites and work your way through and find um, old exam papers. I'm not hugely um, worried about doing practice papers for the Unit 1 exam because the, the main reason you should be doing practice papers, in my opinion, is to really get to grips with the timing and the language paper and to be honest the literature unit one uh, sorry unit two paper the timing is much more of an issue particularly the language paper so you can do a few um, old exam papers on literature unit one just to get you, your head in gear for doing a sort of 45 minutes on one 45 minutes on the other um, but timing is not so complex in this exam uh, but when it comes to language as i'll talk about in another video it really is. <clears throat> so that's my advice for um, how to revise for Literature Unit 1. There are a couple of other general things for revision. You need to be sleeping well. You need to get into this habit as your exam season becomes, um, you know, very, uh, you know, as your exam season draws near, you need to make sure you're getting good sleep, that you're eating, that you're drinking plenty of water, that you're eating well. Um, and just sort of get yourself ready for this uh, very intense time in your life. It is intense. I remember, <clears throat> sorry about my cough, I remember um, this time, however many years ago it was, 18 years ago or something like that, when it was Easter for my um, exam season, and my mum said, I want you to start revising at Easter, and I actually... Uh, got quite ill at Easter, I got glandular fever and the doctor came to see me and said he shouldn't be doing any revision which was the highlight of my holiday um, but I caught up for it later and you know it really is important to be revising so you know when I was revising I did about a month before the exams and um, you've got the chance now to do you know pretty much two months so do make the most of it but, you know, my advice really for revision is you should probably spend an hour a day revising each subject. And, of course, I'm not saying you do 10 hours a day, um, but it just depends how well you want to do. So for me, I spent about a month where every day after school I did three hours a day. And then on a Saturday I did five hours and on a Sunday I did five hours. And to be honest with you, that's the hardest I've ever worked at anything in my life, but it paid off. I got uh, an A star, nine A's, a B and a C. Um, now, if you give yourself a timetable, you want to map out the hours. You might say, I'm going to do five hours a day. You might do a few hours early in the morning, then go out, see some friends, do some stuff, and then come back and do a couple in the afternoon, whatever you want to do. But the best way to plan it is to have a little schedule and then to 
put things back to back for things you do enjoy and don't enjoy. So if you hate maths but you love English literature, do your maths and then do your English literature and you're going to be battling through the maths but thinking I know I'm going to enjoy the next hour watching Mr. Bruff's amazing videos. Give the video a thumbs up if you'd like a video on literature 2 and language.